when you create a docker container and you work on it a few hours you stop it you remove it then you lose all your data because by default when you run containers you never persist your data even if it's a fancy database like postgres mysql if you don't configure your container properly you will lose everything and in this video we will ensure that you will persist your data by learning about docker volumes we will learn how to manage your volumes and we will also learn how to attach your volumes to more than one container or a single container whatever your use case is and so it is going to be a very important docker tutorial to watch so let's get into it so what problems do docker volumes solve and how do they work say we run a python application that writes its logs to a file but we restarted the container for some reason now the log file is directly inside the container so when restarting a container the file that python was writing will be lost and this is where docker volumes come into play it gives the ability to point an entire directory from the container to a volume and volumes allow data persistency and they prevent data loss if your container crashes or restarts we could imagine the process of attaching a volume to a container like attaching a disk on key storage to your computer because when your computer writes to a disk on key and you shut down your computer the data is still there it's still available on that disk on key and what's also nice with volumes is that you can attach any container to it even two containers could read and write to the same volume so now let's see all the examples in action about docker volumes now before we get our hands dirty let me do a short overview of what we have here so you'll have a cleaner picture of what's going on so the docker file that i am going to be using to simulate volumes is going to be this docker file that uses python 3.11 image and it goes ahead and creates a directory and sets it as a working directory in my container and then it also adds another directory called logs for storing my logs in this directory it copies the content of whatever is here to the forward slash app directory and then finally it runs the run.py file which is a python file that is happened to be in this directory as well and that is how the file looks like it simply goes ahead and writes the current time with a sentence that looks like the following to a file that is called info.log and you can see that it runs under while true so this means that that is going to be a container that is going to be running forever unless I stop it manually and that is exactly the behavior that we want to have when we execute sort of a Python service with a docker file so in the current directory we can go ahead and build our image I'm going to go ahead and use docker build dot for the current directory and I'm going to tag this as python underscore app and then we'll let it run and after it has been completed then i'm just going to go ahead and run this as a container in detach mode I'm going to go ahead and use docker run dash d i'm going to give a custom name to my container which i will name logs one and then i will specify my image which is python app like that and right after i have done this i'm going to use the container name to interactively open a shell against my container so it's going to be docker exec dash i t and then i'm going to go ahead and specify the container name and then here comes the command that i'd like to execute against my container and that is simply going to be connecting to the bin bash like that and that will ensure connecting to the container as you see here so you can see that we are inside the forward slash app directory i'm going to cd to logs because i created this directory and then simply i'm going to show you the content of info.log you can see that it is full with a bunch of logs here and what i'm going to do now i'm simply going to exit the container i'm going to docker stop logs one and then i'm also going to delete the container from the system and right after that we are going to see what will happen if we were to run this exact container again with the same settings i'm going to run the container then i'm going to do the exec again and you will see that the info.log file 
is now going to be with new information and this means that if we would like to keep all the logs for the execution of this container then every restart we will lose our data so docker volumes exactly solving this problem and i'm just going to show how you can execute a container with an attached volume so we are going to repeat the process of stopping our container and in addition we are going to remove it perfect so now i'm going to bring back the command that was responsible to execute the previous container and right before the image name we could go ahead and specify some additional arguments to configure volumes and it could be done with the dash v flag and dash v expects two another pieces of information divided with the colon sign so on the left side we are going to specify the volume name that you'd like to have in this container and this doesn't have to be a volume name that you created if it's a volume that does not exist on your host then it will ensure creating it before running the container so you can go ahead and write here python data and again that is not a volume that i created yet it is going to do it in the background and on the right side i'm just going to specify the directory that i like this volume to be attached to and this way the only directory that this volume will watch, so, so to speak, will be the directory that I will specify here. So if we remember, then this is the directory that I'd like to mount to the volume. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm just going to paste it like that. And of course, I will remo remove the hyphen because I use it to show you that it is divided into two pieces of information. All right, so that is the command. And if we run this, and check out the results so we are going to find the docker exit command again which is right here and so here it's just going to be again cd logs and cat info dot log you can see that we have these logs here so this time what i'm going to do i'm simply going to go ahead and just remove everything and i'm going to use the same command but this time I'm going to change my container name and what will happen behind the scenes, the same volume will be attached to two containers. And this way, both of these containers will share the same data. And not only we understand from this case that a container could share the same volume, we will also prove the point that we don't lose data when we use volumes and mount them to directories. So if we run this command here and we check the results with docker exec dash it and we specify the container name and then again we use forward slash bin forward slash bash then let's check out the file now so we are going to clear everything we are going to do cd logs and we are going to see info.log now you can see that now this program does not write logs every three seconds because there are two containers involved and you can see that from the time difference right there is a log in second 57 and then suddenly at 59 and it happens here again so that is the result here. So now we understand two things that a container could share the same volume and attaching volumes in general will avoid losing data if you need to persist it. All right, so now that we understood a little bit about Docker volumes, let's also understand how you can manage the volumes on your system. And there are built-in commands for managing your volumes when you install Docker. So if you go ahead and use Docker volume command, then we are going to see some results and some available commands that we can go ahead and use. One of the commands is creating a volume. And we already know that these also could be created along the way when we execute docker run. But you also have the option to create them separately with docker volume create and then the name of your volume. And there are some more interesting commands. If we go ahead and use docker volume ls, then you can see that I have some volumes in addition to what we created together. I could go ahead and remove one of my volumes. So if I go ahead and use docker volume rm volume underscore two then it is going to be responsible to delete it and if i clean my screen for a second i could also again display the available commands 
We also have the inspect command that shows more information about your volumes that could be valuable for you. So I could go ahead and use docker volume inspect python underscore data. And you can see that we receive valuable info like the time that the volume has been created. All right, so now that we understood how to manage volumes and how to use those inside our containers, then we are also going to understand how we can bind the directories to use the local directories. And this means that the dash V flag also gives you the option to mount a directory that is inside a container to a directory that is inside your local host, inside your computer. So this means that you can access from your local host the data or the files that are inside containers. And so instead of specifying a volume name, you could go ahead and specify directly a directory from your host. And this means a path like C, etc users or something like that okay if you use windows of course now i'm just going to give a wsl path of one of the directories that i already created so i'm going to bring in the directory that i will be writing the logs to and you can see that it is a path from my windows host this will be the path that we will use now again since i'm using wsl then the syntax of the path should be wsl path so I'm just going to deliver it in WSL syntax. If you were not using WSL, anyways, just give the Windows path. So it's going to be MNT, and then the C drive, and then the users, my user, and then my Python logs. Okay, this is the directory that I'm interested to mount to the container path which is app logs and if i run this comment and let's actually change the container name as well because you are not allowed to have duplicated names of containers on your system so i'm going to write here logs 3 or maybe even 4 and i'm just going to run it and if we bring in our directory again then you are going to see the file here if we open it with a notepad then you are just going to see the logs here being written. So that is nice because it gives you the option to see the data inside your container from your local host. And that might be useful, especially when you're developing applications where the application is running inside a container and you need to sync data continuously. So it's useful in cases like if you develop a backend application like Django and you like to have code synchronization between the container that is running Django and to your code that you edit on your local host. And in that case, you might also use the bind mount option of Docker. And I do have a tutorial that explains this topic. If you'd like to watch it, then the link of it will be available in the description. And another important side note to say about binding a path from the container to your local host this will not create a volume behind the scenes okay because you're just mounting paths so if i go ahead and use docker volume ls again then you can see that i still have these two containers that i had earlier on so this is also an important point that you want to note now one of the comments that i really like in docker is a command that allows you to delete all your volumes that are not in use right now and that is called the prune command and you can see that it says remove unused local volumes and i'm going to show how it works in just a bit now before we go ahead and do that let me show you that right now i don't have any containers running and i'd like to restore the logs one container that was using the python data volume just to have a simulation of at least one volume that is in use all right so i'm going to run it and I have a name conflict, so because we stopped this earlier on. So I'm just going to say here logs 10. And that is actually a good that we see this error because we already know that we can't have two containers with the same name. All right, so now that we have created this, then I'm also going to create docker volume create unused volume, something like that. And that's it. So if we list our volumes, then we know that this volume is in use, but the other two are not. So if we go ahead and use docker volume prune dash a, then it should be responsible to remove local volumes that are not in use. So if we say y, then you can see that it shows unused volume has been deleted. Now at this stage, you might be curious why this is the only volume that was deleted, because we know that we had one additional volume that we were thinking that it's not in use as well. 
where here's the important thing to note about docker containers when you stop a container it does not delete it from the containers database so to speak all right so if we bring in a additional window of terminal here then you can see that i executed here docker ps a which lists all the containers and it includes the containers that were also stopped and if we zoom out a bit then you can focus on the right side that I do have a container that was exited and stopped two months ago, but that container was actually trying to use that volume that I talked about. So that is why Docker still assumes that this volume is still in use. And so if I was to go ahead and delete the container, not only stop it, but delete it from my containers database with Docker Let's zoom in a bit. RM elastic search like that. Then now it is deleted from the containers database. And I can prove you that by running Docker PS A again. And you'll see that it is not here. And now if we go back to our original terminal and we try to execute Docker volume prune A again. Then you can see that this volume has been actually deleted and see how many space I saved by doing this action. So you really want to write a large note that a volume that is not in use means that there is no container that was ever relying on this volume. So a stopped container still assumes that this volume is in use by the container and so that is why the elastic volume did not delete earlier on when we executed docker volume prune all right so that should be it on docker volumes if you have any questions let me know in the comments section now i do have an additional list of docker tutorials on my channel as well that you might want to go ahead and watch and be sure to hit the like video here because it will really help this channel a lot and see you in my next upload